I think the viewers will find this very interesting. Now, you worked in the Reagan cabinet. What was it like working during that era, the early 80s, with President Reagan? <laughs> well, uh, Reagan, it, it was, uh, there was joy and there was pain. Reagan actually had an agenda. He had his own agenda. I think and, and this almost made him unique. I think Nixon had an agenda. I think John Kennedy was developing one as he learned uh, about how dangerous the military security complex was. But Reagan came to office with a fully developed agenda. He wanted to fix the U.S. economy, that is to stop the stagflation. And as I had written the uh, Kemp Roth bill, which embodied the policy to stop it, that's why he appointed me to treasury. He said, you have a stake in this, so I can trust you to help me. <laughs> and, if, and he was right. If I hadn't had a stake in it, uh, the pressure to sell out to Wall Street would have been extremely high. So he wanted to cure stagflation and he wanted to end the Cold War. Not win it, end it, he wanted to end it. Now the two things went together in his mind. He said, look, if we can cure stagflation, our economy won't be sick anymore. But the Soviets can't do anything about their economy. It's simply broken. They can't, it can't be fixed. It would have to be abandoned and start over. Uh, and so it, fix the economy for me. And then I will have the wherewithal to threaten the Soviets with an arms race. And I know they can't meet that threat because they don't have an economy. And therefore, this will force them to the negotiating table and we can end the Cold War. So Reagan's goals were together. They were locked together. He couldn't, in his mind, he couldn't end the Cold War unless he could fix the economy first. Because then we would have the resources. The Russians wouldn't, because they are a busted economy. And um, therefore, we said, okay, let's get Cold War over. Are we going off to an arms race? What are you going to do? <laughs> and he had them over the barrel. And that's how he ended the Cold War with Gorbachev. What, was, was there any concern that it would not end and that they had something up their sleeve? Or in the Reagan no. cabinet, did you know it was coming? No, no there was no... Uh, the, the concern was in the military security complex, the CIA and the, and the defense companies. They didn't want the Cold War to end because there went their budget and their power, you see. So uh, what happened, the CIA uh, told Reagan, oh, you can't uh, challenge the Soviets to an arms race, they'll win. He, and he said, what do you mean they'll win? They, they haven't gotten the economy. What are you talking about? Oh, sir, you just don't understand. They have a centrally planned economy they can put the entire economy into the military. Now, you can't do that. The, the consumers will never stand for it, blah, 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 blah. And so Reagan didn't believe him. So he formed a secret presidential committee, put me on it. And we had uh, subpoena power of the CIA. So he said, now I want you to get all their studies backing up their claim and evaluate them and come back and give me a report. Is, is what they're saying true? Do they have? So we had uh, months of uh, access to all their documents and studies supporting their argument. Uh, we could uh, uh, have them come and testify before us, answer questions. It was all totally secret. We were never supposed to talk about it, but it was so long ago now, it doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, we saw that the CIA was making this stuff up. It was really just protecting its position. It needed an enemy. <laughs> and Reagan was going to take the enemy away. Well, 
horrors of all horrors. And so we told him, he said, that's, we said, that's all it is, sir. He said, well, I knew that, but I had to have a report. <laughs> and, and tell me, wh- wh- one more question on this. What, what was he like on a, on a personal level? Uh, this, was the, uh, this was the pain. He was too nice. He uh, hated confrontation. So on the tax cut matter, you have to remember uh, the, the Reagan government was half George Herbert Walker Bush. And the establishment Republicans were very angry that they had lost control of the party to Reagan, who they regarded as an outsider. See, uh, you remember he won, uh, he had to defeat Bush for the nomination, the father Bush. And they were scared that his popularity, he'd be in office eight years, and then uh, some dynamic guy like Jack Kemp would be in for eight years and they'd lose control of the party. And this was more important to them than anything else. The establishment did not want to lose control of the Republican Party. And of course, being conservative, they thought that the tax cut would be inflationary uh, and so on. And uh, they couldn't understand supply side economics either. It was too new, it was too, we didn't have 10 years to educate people to the idea. It happened suddenly when the opportunity arose. And so nobody really knew what it was about. So it made your enemies easy to uh, caricature to it, you know, to make a joke of it or fun of it or give it bad attributes, this sort of thing. So what would happen, uh, and, and Wall Street was worried because they thought about like Keynesians too. Oh my God, uh, they'll cut taxes, the deficit inflation, it'll ruin our stock and bond portfolios. So they were leaning on the George Herbert Walker Bush people in the administration to block this program, to block the, to stop Reagan, stop the administration from sending the tax bill to Congress. And my job was to get it out of the administration and sent to Congress. Well, um, they would make all these arguments that the liberals would make against us inflation deficits. So we would uh, all meet uh, in the White House and uh, Reagan would listen to them, he'd listen to us. And he would say, I agree with the treasury and get up and walk out of the room. As soon as he leave the room, James Baker, who was the chief of staff, later uh, secretary of the treasury, secretary of state, he was George Herbert Walker Bush's operative. Very slick guy, nice guy, attractive, tall, immaculately dressed. He would turn uh, to us and say, can't the Treasury make a better case? In other words, he didn't hear what the president said. (laughs) And uh, we would go back to the Treasury. The secretary was Don Regan. And he'd say, Craig, what's going on? I heard president make a decision and uh, the chief of staff didn't hear it. (laughs) And I said, well, Don, they don't want this policy. And so they're telling us uh, to change our minds. And and, uh, I said, I'm not going to do it. I hope you don't. He said, no, we can't do that. And so we would go back again, have the same meeting, the president sitting there. And, of course, Don Regan and I, we'd be waiting for the president to blow up and say, hey, what is this? I made this decision last week. No. Sit there. Listen to it all. He'd say, I agree with the president, uh, with the treasury. I agree with the treasury. Get up and leave the room. Jim Baker again said, can't the treasury make a better case? So it was this that made it difficult to help him because he wouldn't come down on Jim Baker. Now, I think he knew that if he did, 
uh, the Bush people who were in with the media would turn loose all kinds of stuff on him. Um, and so he was just relying on us. Uh, no matter how much frustration we were being buried in, <laughs> to stick at it, which we did. But it was a very difficult thing because it put, you didn't have the backing at the top. I mean, you had the backing. He agreed with you, but he wouldn't enforce it. <laughs> and so he never told Jim Baker, hey, I've already made this decision twice. This is, I don't want it a third time. That's, you see, and Don Regan was a businessman. He would run Merrill Lynch. He had been a Marine, a colonel in the Marine. And he was used to doing what the boss wanted. <laughs> That's how he got to be a boss. And uh, he couldn't believe it. So that aspect of working for Reagan made it very difficult. And it scared a lot of the Reagan people. They thought that, uh, you know, the establishment was just too powerful and they wouldn't be able to do anything that Reagan wanted. And but uh, we did succeed. We got the tax cut passed. Uh, the stagflation disappeared. No one's seen it since. <laughs> well, the Fed, no, no the one's seen Fed it can't since. Bring it back. No one's seen it since, but. Um... <laughs> I'm going to talk about the next decade uh, very, very soon, and hopefully we don't see it. No, that's a great, that's a great story.